Hello everyone, my name is Abigail Marshall and I want to welcome you to my channel. Today I want to present to you these beautiful shelf decor pieces that were made from items only found at the Dollar Tree. The following items are needed to complete this project. Four wooden blocks, a wired shelf, foam rings, a metal plaque, rope, and little pebbles. Now I'm going to list a few items that you may already have at home. Hopefully you do, otherwise you can always grab them when you're at the store. You may not need every last item, you can probably improvise on some of them. For an example, the popsicle sticks are only used for spreading glue, and you could probably use your finger or a piece of cardboard as you'll see in this video. So let's begin. This cabinet shelf is going to be used for holding my props up. Taking the legs off were pretty tricky, but I realized that you have to bend it in a backwards and forwards motion to actually break them off. But you can't bend them too hard, just kind of push and pull the legs in short motions until they snap. And you'll find that they won't bend. While I did this, it felt like they wouldn't break, but as I continue, eventually they snap, so don't give up. Next, we're going to sand our wooden blocks to prepare them for standing. I'm no professional at sanding, but I do know that I do not like splinters. So I do not have any preferences for you guys to sand to, but I would say sand to your liking. But making sure to knock off those large splintering pieces, in which you'll see in this next clip. Once the sanding is completed, we need to measure, mark our center, as we prepare to drill our holes. I'm not sure what size my drill bit is, but it's almost the same size as the wired leg. I'm only drilling about halfway through my block. Be sure not to drill all the way through. We're going to go back in with our hammer and reinforce our wired leg so that it does not move. I would recommend you go outside and hammer it right on the sidewalk if you don't have a table already that was meant for hammering. I know that it was not safe for me to hammer on my table so I moved my piece onto a solid surface elsewhere and hammered there. Because those light taps that you saw me doing on here were not getting the job done. Again, remember not to hammer all the way through, maybe one eighth of an inch further than we drilled. You guys, my glue was just so, so clumpy, but it got the job done. So once you put your glue on, you'll put your pieces together and put something on both sides to weigh it down a bit and let it sit. Now it's time to create the heads. We're starting off with our rope and I would recommend using your hot glue maybe every inch. You see me maybe doing one or two inches and I would recommend every one inch or at least just hot glue it as you go because you want this to be as firm as possible. The more glue you use, the better it will stand on its own. I used two packs of rope and the size came out perfect. It's okay that the glue is visible on the back side. We just want to make sure that we keep the front of it clean. So try to clean up as you go to avoid adding problems to your project. If you have gloves that are safe to use with the hot glue gun, I highly recommend it because I burnt myself so, so many times. So please be careful. And here's another bottle of clumpy glue in which I have no explanation for. This step is very important. We really need to harden our prop so that it can actually stand. Because remember, this is just rope hot glue together, and hot glue is not that secure. This piece is going to take a few hours to dry, so just set it aside and move on to your next project. So far we've created our first prop, 
and on to the second one. This will be the easiest one. The most challenging part was trying to figure out how I was going to attach my props to the wired leg. So here I'm just doing a test practice to figure out what will work best. I'm using the wired leg that I accidentally bent the wrong way as test practice, so we'll come back to it and see how it holds up. Finally, we get to the fun part, the staining. You couldn't mess this up if you tried. Make sure you're brushing in the direction of the grain and shake your stain up before you start. Pull all visible areas and the bottom if desired. Just be sure to avoid your white metal leg. You really should stain before adding your white wire, but it's very easy to clean if you didn't. Find yourself an old rag so you can wipe that extra stain away and not your mom's good ones. I wasn't willing to use any of my good rags, so I just got tissue paper. It, it worked fine. I didn't worry much about staining the bottom. Once I used my rag to wipe the residue away, it smeared onto the bottom nicely, so I didn't really have to stain it directly. Remember that this is your project and you can do it any way that you want. You don't even have to stain it. You could use acrylic paint and paint it another color. You could get a wood burner and burn designs into it. I think that would be beautiful as well. Once I finished standing, I sprayed my wood with the clear top coat. As I said earlier, the white coating on our wired legs clean up very easy. We waited long enough for our hot glue to dry and now it's time to test it out. Let me tell you that this hot glue is not budging at all. I thought I was going to break my metal plaque and have to buy a whole new one, but thank God it came off. Now it's time to work on our hardest prop. Anyone can do this, but it will take time and patience. You guys know I use wall paint for everything. So if that's all you have around your house, then you can use that to do this project. Otherwise, go ahead and get some acrylic paint. We're not painting on an actual canvas, so I'm not worried about my project cracking. Besides, it's about to be covered in rocks anyway. Who's gonna know? You'll need only one bag of rocks for your foam ring. As you add the rocks, you'll notice that the ring will become very heavy. So that you can avoid my mistakes, separate your rocks. One section of large rocks and the other section of smaller rocks. Use half of the small and large rocks on just one side and then flip it over and use large and small rocks on the other side. This way you keep the weight balanced and it will not have a need to fall over. I don't have a particular pattern for you to lay your rocks, but I would recommend you not to bunch up all the heavy ones. I didn't realize this until later, so do as I say and not as I do. As a heads up, I can tell you that I used a good 20 glue sticks on this project alone. So I would highly recommend you guys get a hundred in a bag. You'll thank me later. As I said earlier, my foam ring felt a few pounds heavier after adding the rocks, so I needed some more support. I went back to that wire shelf to snap off some more wires. I didn't have any pliers, so I just used my hammer and kind of twisted it around so I could get them to snap. This is where that nail comes in. You'll hammer it into the wood to create that hole and then hammer in your wire. And the part we've all been waiting for is securing the prop. I had no way of telling it was level, so you have to be careful. If you insert the wires the wrong way, just remove the ring, rotate it, and reinsert, and then cover the holes with the rocks. Because we glued this prop together, we created stability. I'm pre-drilling a hole for my wire insert. This one was kind of tough, but you have to make sure when you drill, you stay in between the rope. 
Add a little hot glue for reinforcement and drive your wire all the way in. If you glued this correctly, it should stand on its own. And last but not least, our round metal plaque. This one is almost self-explanatory. The wired leg came with the shoe and I felt that it would adhere better if it was on there. Regardless, this is our lightest prop so you're not going to have any issues with this one. I could have purchased a wired plaque to go on the back to cover it up. But it's going in my house and who's looking at the back anyway? Be sure to prop this up so that it can dry straight and not at an angle. I love that this plaque is bendable and adds more texture to your space. Dollar Tree offers so many shapes so make sure you go in there and be creative. And here are the final results. Again I want to thank you so much for joining me on this video. I pray that you learned something new. I pray that you are inspired. There is more where this came from so make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you will never miss another video. Leave your comments and questions down below and I'll be sure to get back with you. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching and you have a great day.